Hi, this is Abhilash and today we are going to solve another problem with code 1462 course schedule 4. So in this question, there are a total of num courses that we have to take labeled from 0 to n minus 1. We are given an array of prerequisites where prerequisites i is denoted by ai comma bi indicates that we must take ai before we choose bi. For example, the pair 0 1 indicates that 0 must be taken before 1. Okay, prerequisites can also be indirect. If A is the precursor of B and B is the precursor of C, then A is indeed the precursor of C. So this can be modeled as a simple graph traversal problem. Can be solved with either DFS or BFS. Okay, so we are going to go ahead with the BFS approach because uh, BFS will ensure that if a particular edge contains a prerequisite, uh, that particular, the right hand side or the terminal point of that particular edge will be done only after the left hand side is completed. So we need a visited matrix rather than a visited array of vertices. We need a visited matrix and this is going to be an edge based uh, visited matrix. A 2D vector in this case. So that should only ensure it. We are also given an array of queries where queries j indicates uj comma vj. Okay. So for the jth query, we should answer whether uj is a prerequisite of vj or not. So in this case, prerequisite count is 1 comma 0. And these are the two queries that we have. So this is true. 1 comma 0 is true because 1 is indeed the precursor of 0. But 0 comma 1 is false because it is just the opposite of what is being shown here. The graph is also a directed graph. Okay, so first let us try to model this approach. So uh, in this case, we are going to create an adjacency list. Okay, so let us first take the number of nodes or the number of courses in this case. Okay, and let us initialize the vector of ADJ list. And this is going to be the size of N, the number of courses. And we're going to write uh, this particular loop, which will loop through the, uh, let me just see if the spelling is correct. Okay. And we are going to append it to the list. Because this will reduce the time complexity of V to V plus C in the case of BFS traversals. requisites i1. So that should be the graph is now created. Now the second step is step number two. Step number two is to create the result. So the result is going to be a Boolean vector, right? So vector of bool result and its size is going to be the queries. And everything is going to be false at start. Okay. And now we need the most important part that is edge matrix or edge visited matrix, if I want to name it like that. So this ensures that it is going to be a bool, which ensures that, you know, one comma zero is true. Okay. So let's say we have another connected node from zero to let's say any other number, let's say hundred. So that means one is also the precursor of hundred. Okay. So that means one, zero and hundred those are marked as true in the visited edge. So in this case, it is going to be visited n vector bool. This is a little different um, than what a standard BFS visited array looks like uh, because we are not only taking the edges, the vertices, but also the edges. The next step is iterate through the what is this? No. Or to i equal to zero, i less than n, i plus plus. And now we want to create a BFS function. BFS loop. So, like I said, this function can also this can also be solved by using a BFS approach. But let us try to solve it with BFS. Um, so we need that distance list. We need the visited 2D uh, vector, and we need the current index, starting index. This also takes into consideration disjoint graphs. Very, very important. So for this, this loop is there. 
void mefs. This is our adjacency list. It's going to be the visited to the array or vector, and this is going to be our vertex. Now, as BFS loop is there, we need a queue. In the case of standard BFS, we have to push that element that is V. Okay. And now uh, we have to iterate through the loop. So, in this case, while not queue dot empty. A very simple thing is that this approach, if you just replace this queue with stack, it becomes a DFS. So the same code can be used. Auto temp equal to q dot front, okay, and q dot pop. Now the next part is interesting because checking whether visited, okay, visited ancestor child is true or not, equal to false. Then if that is false, make it true. This will only ensure that if 100 is connected to node 0, that means 1 to 100 and then to 0, they are all visited. So keeping that in mind, so we are going to check if, if not, let us type this way, if not visited, um, since V is the ancestor, so I'm going to write it as V. Okay. Okay. So I forgot to write the for loop for this for running over the adjacency list for auto j in um, adj list. Let's say uh, temp. Okay. Inside that, this condition is going to be there. Okay. If not visited v comma j. Okay. Then I am going to mark it as visited v comma j. So this is a very standard iterate through the ADJ list representation of V. Just zoom in. Okay. And I'm going to push that back in the queue. Q dot push J. Okay, that's it for this particular function. This is going to be our BFS loop. It will it will iterate through that loop, taking the front element, okay, and iterating through the adjacency list representation of it, and checking whether the ancestor is false. We make it as true, and that's it. Now, once this is done, once this is done, this visited array gets to the array gets updated. Now, for the populating the result. How do we populate the result? So the logic is for each query, we select the Boolean values from visited to the array. So let's say visited query, uh, query that is query zero, query element zero. So let's say query zero comma query one. This is the logic it is going to be. So because our visited array keeps in, keeps true for all the elements that can be reached from node one. In this example, all the nodes that can be reached from node number one, let's say 100, 200, 300, all of them will be marked as true. I less than queries dot size plus plus. And I'm going to write this result of I is going to be the visited going to be queries um, i sorry right okay, queries i zero queries i one that's it so and I'm going to return the result so that's so this should be the logic for this particular problem. So we are iterating through the all the vertices and we are checking all the reachable nodes from that started vertex, so from that starting vertex. And automatically we mark it as true so that that edge becomes true. And if that edge becomes true, then we, and it is there in the query that we want to answer, then we append it to the result. 
we allocate that value to the result. So this is a pretty straightforward graph based BFS based question or a DFS based question where the, where the tricky part is only this one. So this is what, this is the tricky part of having edges as visited. Okay. So if we were to run this problem, uh, let's try to run the code and see whether we are getting an, a correct output or not. So let us try with this. I think this should give correct answer. Uh, let us try the uh, this this second example only for simplicity. This should be returned as false in both the cases because there is no graph. Let me just minimize this. Yeah. There is no graph. And also write another example. Okay, let's write this three paste and and here we paste the queries let us try to run three of them together so we get an accepted answer for all of them let's try to submit and see whether we are getting the correct answer so this gives a more or less correct answer uh, the central core logic is this part. So this is a very standard PFS problem where we only check whether a node can be reached via its precursor from its predecessor or prerequisite, okay, through a connecting path. And that connecting path means that the edge has to be marked as visited. And this is done by checking if the visited 2D vector, let's say source and destination is false, then we mark it as true if it is visited. It is there in the adjacency based representation of that particular source node and we push that back with a queue. So this is a very good problem on BFS part. So this problem can also be solved with DFS and it is highly encouraged to try it out with DFS approach. It is very simple, just changing the code over here from queue to stack will just make it as a DFS problem. Uh, otherwise there is also a recursive, a recursive thing that we can also try. Uh, that's all for today's video. Hope you like this and I will hope to see you in the next video. Please do subscribe to my channel.